There we go. All right, everybody, we are going to start a little stream here. Uh, we got No Man's Sky VR on the PC. It just came in via Steam. I bought this game a while back. And this is a game I've been playing for a while. I really enjoy the game. And I'm very eager to see how all of this works in virtual reality. This is one of my, my favorite games. Um, and this is my Vive Pro headset. I've got my Sennheiser thing here. And hopefully my, everything will cooperate hardware-wise. So let me get the headset on. And there's a real sense of scale on this one. I have to say, everything looks a lot bigger than I expected it to look as I was uh, getting into this here. And they do have some pretty good controls for getting all your stuff going. And let me grab my controllers here. All right, there we go. All right. And let me just get these going. All right, so I think we're ready to go here. Now there's my ship. And I've got this uh, little fighter craft here. So, and I think I'm seeing a bug already. <laughs> I'm not seeing my hands in front of me. I was seeing them before. So, oh, there we go. Okay, now I got my hands. Let me just make sure you all are still seeing what I'm seeing. Yep, all right, we're good. Okay. So I, I will say on first impression here, my, my little spaceship here looks enormous. Um, I can walk around here. It's gonna give me a warning uh, when I jump too far out, but I can reset my view anytime I want. So this, is, this area here is where I'm supposed to be playing. Uh, and if I hold down the menu button, that will reset my view. So I'm at the right, um, the right standpoint here. Now they've got the, um, the turbo movement here, so I can walk around if I want. Um, or I can just jump to a specific spot. So here's my ship up close. And I think we're gonna get inside. Okay, so now, whoa, here we go. And I was wondering how they were gonna handle this because uh, you're kind of going from a standing to a sitting position. So I'm, I'm looking at my, my seat here. This is my ship. It looks pretty freaking awesome. And I think I can grab that. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna grab this. And let's see if this, oh, okay. Yeah, I could dig this. This is, uh, wow, this is pretty cool. All right, now how do I get rid of this thing here? Left G continue, what is left G? All right. Well, I will say right out of the gate, this is pretty darn, pretty darn cool. And you gotta hold on to these. So when your hands lock in, you have to continually grip the controls here to be able to use them. And this is my throttle here. And I've got to readjust these controls in it, I think, because I want them to go the opposite direction. So now what I'm not sure about, there we go. So I got that. Oh yeah, this is really cool. I think I would be better seated. So I guess you could sit down and then just reorient things. Um, the only issue I'm having here is the, the controls are reversed to where I want them to be. So I want to adjust that real quick. So I'm going to hit the menu here. And I'm gonna go over to options maybe. How do I get rid of this? LG. So this thing's stuck on my screen here. LG. There we go. Okay. Perform a turn. Use R and R to change direction. There we go. Okay. Well, I have to say it's really cool to have my whole ship here rendered out, which is awesome. Um, what I what I there's my scanner. Now what I'm not sure about is how to, there we go, okay. So down is gonna be my pulse engine. So we're gonna come down to this planet here. And this is really pretty cool, guys and gals. All right, there we go. So I'm still getting used to the controls here because you have to like hold on to your controller here to, to steer around. Um, whoa. Now. It, it is like jumping out as you, I don't know if you can see this, but it's jumping out of the, out of the VR thing briefly here as it's loading in. I guess, you know, some of the bugs we'll have to address here as things are going. Oh, wow. All right, now, whoa, ah, oh, okay. All right, so I need to grab on. I think this might be easier with a, with the game controller because you have to continually hold on to the stick here to get all this stuff to work. All right, now I'm going to maybe try to land it here. So that's the scanner, pulse engine. Maybe if I can, maybe this is the land button. Let's see. Let's see. 
land. Yeah, so getting used to the controls here, we're upside down. <laughs> uh, might be a little bit. I will say from a motion sickness standpoint, this is not bad. I don't really feel like disoriented at all. Now partly because I'm, maybe because I'm standing. Um, but I've been getting more used to this VR movement stuff, so I think that's part of it. And I've never really been uh, prone to motion sickness before. There we go. All right, so now let's, how do we land this sucker? There we go. I'm not sure how I did that, but I landed. All right, so now we're on the surface of a planet. And I can grab onto this and lift out that. And now I'm outside my ship. And this is pretty cool. So graphically, um, all right, so I can reach over my shoulder and press my, okay, there we go. So now I have my, all right, now how do I switch my stuff here? Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, this is cool. And I can walk over to these things here. Yeah, so the grass is rendering in a little bit. It, you know what's amazing is how much bigger everything looks. I just learned a new word. And now the sentinels are scanning me. As long as I don't try to take something that he doesn't want me to take, I think we're going to be OK. And what I'll do next is we'll get back in the ship and go to my other planet, because that's where my base is. And I will say this, this thing here is annoying, because I know I'm outside my play area, but I know I've got some wiggle room. So it would be good to have a little more flexibility with that. Um, frame rate wise, I think we're not doing so great here. I, I didn't load up my VR, um, my VR thing first before I went in here. Um, the graphic fidelity is certainly less than what it looks like on my 4K TV, but that's also because we are at a lower resolution here with the, with the headset. But I have some freedom to walk around. This is really bothering me though. I really want to be able to turn off this, this notice because I'm, I'm aware of the limits of my my play area here. So that keeps popping up. I know they want you to be safe, but you know, it's kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. That's the scanner. Yeah, it feels definitely very 1.0 to me. Um, okay, so now we're gonna get a superheated storm. So let's go back to the ship. So I think my biggest complaints so far are just the constant warnings about the, the bounds of the VR thing. Um, and the controls are OK. I think the ship controls need a little work. And I actually, it gives me an excuse to look at my, let's go over to the options, uh, general controls. Uh, let's go back here. Left grip. So le that's what LG is. LG is left grip. Uh, control options, and I want to invert my flight controls. So apparently what they, they were inverted before. Oh, I see. All right, let's try lock normal and see what happens there. Let's try that. All right, now we got to get back on the ship before. Uh, there we go. Okay. All right, let's get off this planet here. Hopefully I got enough launch thruster, there we go. All right, so now what's cool about this game is that you can just point your ship up and you're in space. It's freaking amazing. We can look back here and see the planet kind of going away from us. So that is really cool. I will need to adjust the graph. The graphics look okay. I mean, they look a lot better on my TV screen, um, but the three dimension of the dimensionality of everything, the immersion is really is certainly there on this. All right, so now let's go and see if we can find where my base is. I'm on a different planet. I'm over there. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go point ourselves at my base. And the planet's called Bubble Popia. Do not judge. And let's get. Oh, I don't want to go that. So let me do that and go point it over here. I'm going to show you my base here. So I'm going to hold down left to tag. Let's see if I can get the ship in, engaged here. Yeah, the controls definitely are not 
great with, uh, with the VR because you don't really have anything you're holding on to. All right, and now we've got some bad guys that might be checking us out. All right, so let's get in down there. Okay, so let me go grab this. Oops. And let's go. All right, he's sending me to the resource the thing. I don't want that. I want to go. Let's pull this back out here. Ah, you know, one of the things I hate about the, about the HTC Vive controllers is I'm always hitting the, the button for the menu when I don't mean to. And I will say, the, um, uh, the controllers from Valve, the Valve Index controllers, are actually pretty good. I may actually pick those up. I was not crazy about the Valve Index headset. All right, so why can't I tag my base here? This is where I want to go. There we go. All right, so now we're going to go fly to my base, and it's going to take us about 15 seconds to get there, provided my pulse engine fuel doesn't wear out. <clears throat> and no worries, if we run out of fuel, we can just get more from asteroids, and I'll show you around my base. But this is pretty cool. I got to say, I'm impressed. The graphics, again, are not as good, um, but the VR thing is working here. Now it looks like I've run out of fuel, so now what I can do is shoot up some of these asteroids and hopefully we'll get some fuel out of them. Yeah, this, this control scheme is not working for me. It's just too complicated. Let me grab my controller in a minute. There's also a bit of a, of a lag when you're moving around here too. All right, we're still not getting what I need here. So we've gotten gold and silver, but no fuel. And you can see that coming in right there. So silver, what we need is tritinium or some crazy thing like that. And wait for my gun to overheat here. All right. All right, let me just check and make sure the stream is still working. It looks like everything is good so far. And I will get to your chats in a minute there. Um, somebody wants to know if this works on the Oculus Quest. It does not. Um, because this is uh, PC and um, Xbox, I'm sorry, PC and uh, PSVR. You can play it um, obviously in desktop mode and other, other things there. Now I need to figure out how to get my ship fueled up here. Um, let's see, refuel, pulse engine, hold right trigger. Okay, I did that. Accessing menus, raise your left hand, point at it with your right hand. All right, I see. So how do I do that? So, let's see. I gotta figure out how to make my hand point here. Point at it with your right hand. This is where those knuckle controllers probably would work better for me. There we go, I want, this is what I want. There we go, okay, so I want inventory. And then we're gonna go over to my Starship and I have some fuel here, so I'm gonna go to the pulse engine and I'm gonna refuel it, all right. So now we're good, and I want to disable that menu now. So how do I get the heck out of here? So return left grip. All right. All right, let's get this thing back on course. All right, so we're going to point it at the stuff there. We're going to tag. Yeah, I tell you, it's so hard to control this. All right, there we go. Ah, come on. All right, screw it. We're just going to put it into pulse mode here. All right, here we go. And I'm hoping it's going to drop me off at my base. If not, the beacon I have there is not far. All right, yeah, so did the other thing here. So, oops. We're just going to point it at my base here. I definitely feel like I'm in some sci-fi movie controlling this ship with my, my hands here. There's good haptic feedback on the controls also. You can see the ground getting closer. And what I'm going to do is come in a little hot here, and then I'm going to, yeah, there we go. It's so funny. I mean, it's, it's familiar and it's not, which is really what's been kind of fun about this. All right. Oh, I guess, okay. So this is the wrong thing. Okay. So this is my other, so we're going to point the ship at my base, which is over here. 
And I'm definitely seeing a couple of frame drops here and there. I have a 1080, T, uh, 1080 not a TI, but a regular 1080. And this game's usually pretty demanding even when you're not in VR. But I'll tell you, the experience here is, ah, come on, get up. Um, the experience here is pretty good. And it's, it's like, it's familiar and it's not familiar, which is what's cool about it. All right, so let's, all right, let's bring it in for a landing here. There we go. So I'm hitting, I'm tapping down on this controller to, to land. All right, and now I'll show you around my, my base, everybody. How does that sound? So we're gonna grab my, I love that. I love that. It's so cool. All right, so here we are. Here's my ship. It is much bigger than I expected my ship to be. This is one of three ships that I have, and I'm gonna take you on a tour um, in a minute. I'm gonna take these headphones off for a minute. I'm gonna take you on a tour um, of my base, and then we're gonna to go to my frigate, which is uh, above the, the stars, above the planet there. It looks like we got a bunch of comments coming in. I guess you can use the controller, the game controller, to um, control the ship if you want. So, uh, so that's good. And what I'm going to do here, real quick, is just reorient. I'm glad they have this feature. So if you hold down the uh, menu button up here, it'll reorient you, and you can kind of go that way. So we're going to go walk uh, down here. Now this big thing here is just like an artifact of some of these civilizations that you encounter in the game. Um, so this was something that was there and then it was a flat piece of land so I decided to like to build my base here. So that's what we got there. Now, what they've changed in this uh, new version of No Man's Sky is that all of your base components now have to get powered. So you have to install a power plant and batteries to get everything to work. So right now all my stuff is not working. <laughs> so it was working yesterday. Uh, so this thing is my teleporter. And what I can do with this is teleport to other bases that I have and other space stations. It's a lot, much faster way to get around. So no matter where I am in this galaxy, and there are many galaxies, uh, I can get to where I need to go. What's funny is I ended up in a different galaxy than where you started. Um, which has been interesting. Um, now I can save my game here. Oops, see see what I do every time? I keep hitting that. Okay, I see, so the motion here is make a fist and grab it down. Now if I want to just walk around, I can. But this comes up, I, you know, I really got to figure out a way to get rid of that because it's pointless to have that when I already have my boundaries below me here. I don't need that. So I'm going to hit the menu button here and see if there's a way that we can we can make some adjustments. Uh, general options. Yeah, I'm not seeing it there. Hold to confirm, redeem bonus content. Let's go back, left grip. It's cool though how well this works and the depth is definitely here. Um, I feel a lot smaller than I, than I do when I'm playing the game on a TV screen. That's for sure. What does that do? Okay, I just recenters the VR view. It looks like you can't turn that off maybe? Let's see. And right now I just have everything on enhanced apparently, so I'm guessing it's just doing the right setting for, for what my configuration is at the moment. I'm definitely, it's definitely feeling good. I think there's probably some, uh, you know, Steam will do some stuff to uh, smooth out the frame rate, and I'm guessing that's probably happening here because it's, it's smooth, but it's not feeling like um, some of the games that run faster in VR. Um, so the image quality is good. Um, but it's definitely a resolution reduction. Um, this is a, essentially a 1440p headset, which is the Vive Pro. All right, so let's take a tour around my base. I'm still constructing things. So what you need to do in this game um, is you have to gather resources to build out what you're doing. So right now I haven't yet uncovered, I kind of started a fresh game um, a few months ago in, or a few weeks ago in anticipation of this new version. Gosh, it's so annoying. I can't get rid of that. Um, so what I did is, um, built a new base. These are my employees. So this is my, um, this guy is like my, my head guy. And we can talk to him, I would guess. So we can, and he'll talk to us. Where did he go? There he is. So he's giving me something else to do here. And what I have to do is go find this farmer and then bring him to the base also. Get a closer look at him. The detail is really cool. You can see a lot of the character detail. You can see his eyes moving around behind those glasses there. Very cool. So he's sending me off on a mission here. We can go over and visit with, uh, this is my um, research scientist guy. 
And then I've got a weapons officer here. And they each have like missions that they send you off on. And you can do the missions, you know, or you can just kind of explore things, you know. Um, this planet, so my daughter, who hates video games, she's six years old, um, saw me playing this one night and she's like, she loves space and, and planets and astronomy and she likes the concept of the game. Um, so this planet that I'm on, it's called Bubble Popia. It is the only one of this in the game. There's billions of planets that you can explore, I think. And uh, this is something that I discovered and it's been credited to me and that's it, it's mine. Um, and I have a base here. I think people can come and visit the base. And I don't believe, let me check the menu and make sure. Um, I don't believe that they can change my base. So let's see what we have here. I have some multiplayer is enabled. Anyone can join my group. Um, and I think, and those, those are the, uh, the guys mowing the grass out there. Uh, let's see, can I join my group? Da -da -da -da. Okay, damage players and add base parts. So I want to make this no one. So I don't want anyone deleting my base because people could come to your base and just start messing around with it. But I don't mind if you add base parts to it. So we'll return with that. And yeah, so I, I, I think this is cool. I can walk around. And, you know, but the fact that they keep putting this menu up every time I step too far outside my boundary here, I'm not digging that because I just want to be able to walk around a little bit. I know the, how my room's configured here. I can make it work. I need to try to figure out how to make a bigger VR space also. Um, so let me just move back into a spot in which it is happy. <laughs> there we go. And we'll just walk around a little bit. I'll see if there's a way to turn that off. Um, so, gosh, it's like driving me nuts. You have moved outside the boundary of your play area. Hold. All right, let's just reset here. Okay. Reach over your shoulder and then press RG. So what's funny is when I take the controller and put it over my shoulder, it starts to vibrate and I can pull out my multi-tool. And what I can do with the multi-tool here is gather uh, resources that those things have. So these balls here have ferrite dust and oxygen, and both of these things are pretty critical uh, for things that you do in the game. And then down there, and see so now here's a sentinel. So what they, the sentinels are, they're kind of the guardians of the, of the universe. And they will attack you if you do things they don't like. So a lot of times, if, like for example, if I start shooting this thing here, he's going to come around and scam me again. And now he's investigating me. And if I kept shooting that thing, he would, he would attack me. And then you can attack them back. And usually these ones aren't too hard to kill but they send more after you. It's kind of like the cops in GTA V. And you can run away from them, and they generally leave you alone after a while, but it's still um, pretty, pretty annoying to have them tailing you there. He's going to come after me again. And provided I don't, like, so once he, once he scans me here and he stops, then we're good. And he'll fly away here. Now, it's cool from a scale standpoint is everything in the game feels so much bigger. So you feel a lot smaller here. Um, and there's a sense of depth that you don't have, of course, on a two-dimensional screen. Um, so we're going to grab some oxygen. Oops, here it goes again, uh, out of the plant here. Um, so I can look down on this valley here, and it's like 3D, and this ball is huge in front of me. It's just amazing. Really cool. And that's why that message keeps driving me crazy, because like, I just want to walk around a little bit more, and I can, but... Boom, <laughs> it's you again. So I gotta look in to see if there's a way around that. I'll check the chat in a little bit. I can't see anyone's chats right now, everyone, so I will jump into the chat menu after we take another look around here. So yeah, so this planet's kind of desolate. Um, the other one we were on a minute ago is a little more interesting. Now what I'm gonna do is, now that you see my base, um, I am going to get back in the ship and I'm gonna call up my frigate, because I have a frigate and a freighter. So we're going to check those out. And you can see it is drawing in some of the textures as I'm walking around here. But this is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm definitely going to tweak around with the graphics a little bit later, because I, I think I could probably do better on my configuration. And now you can see the sun rising, too. Maybe we'll get out for a second and just check out the sun rising. I just love that, that motion of taking the... So let's go climb up to the top of the of the mountain or the hill here. You can get a sense as to the scale of Bubble Popia. My daughter named this, by the way, in case you're wondering. So this is my home. And it's pretty neat. I, I made the mistake, though, of settling on this planet. There's not a lot of carbon here. 
And carbon's kind of a really important component to a lot of what you do. But I can convert oxygen that's in these, in these balls to, to, um, to carbon. Let me grab my, now I gotta charge my weapon again. And this is one of the other things that you'll run into in this game is that stuff needs to be charged all the time. So, so let's pull up our menu here. And then I can go over to my multi-tool. They've handled this mechanic really well, actually. I like the fact that you can go into your wrist here. It's actually faster than I think than the game is to some degree. So my mining beam needs carbon, and I have no carbon. In fact, there's no, like I said, there's no carbon here on the planet at all. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll come back to that. We'll just get on the ship and go to my, my freighter here. So, so we'll get on the ship, jump in there. Yeah, this is, this is definitely well executed. And it doesn't feel like a port. Like things feel familiar again, but but bigger, and and there's a there's a real dimensionality to this. Um, I like the reflections here on the glass from the sun. That's pretty cool. This will probably make me want to upgrade my my GPU at some point. So we're going to take off. And one of the other annoyances of this game is that you're always out of fuel to to lift off. And now we're going to go. Um, we're going to go up into space here. And we're going to get a little bit away from the planet. And you can see the, the planet here. I'll just kind of tilt this way a little bit. You can see it kind of going away. This planet has rings also, which is pretty cool. I'm sure there's some astronomical uh, things that are not correct there. And this has a bunch of planets in the system. I think we were just at this planet a little while ago. OK, so now there's some pirates that might be coming after us too, but we'll, we'll deal with them in a minute. All right, so now. Uh, what I want to do is get my freighter to come here. So let's see. Quick menu. There we go. So now I'm going to go over here. And we're too close, it says. So we're going to jump out a little bit into, into space here. So let's uh, close that. And then we're going to hit the. There we go. So down on this pad is what will get us going here with the pulse engine. And then we're going to jump back out, and we'll slow down, and now we'll pull up our freighter again. I'm getting the hang of this. I really like the interface here. This is cool stuff. All right, so there's my freighter. And now we're going to dock with the freighter. So let's grab my controls here, and we'll fly in. Woo! And you'll dock automatically when you get close to it. All right. And we'll be safely in our ship by the time these guys come and get me. And you can see we're docking automatically. And so the freighter is cool because you can store a lot of materials in it. Um, and it also is more efficient when you're warping between star systems. So if you can get out of freighter quickly, that's what you should do. Let's pop out. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's really neat to be able to walk around, um, to walk around this stuff that I've been playing in two dimensions for a while. This, this is what's really been exciting about this update here. And again, the only issue I've got is just the, the stupid thing that keeps popping up. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. It looks so much bigger. <laughs> that's the, and I can't imagine this was easy for them because they had to figure out what should the scale of this stuff be for someone in a VR headset. All right, so we're going to go up to that thing up there. And let's jump up on the stairs. And we'll go up to you. So if I had a bigger space, it'd be awesome just to walk through. Because I can walk. I mean, I could definitely walk through here if I wanted to. And that's one of the great things about room scale VR is the ability to do that kind of walking. It's really neat. All right, so let's jump in here. And we'll come up to the. Yeah, so graphically, you know, it's, um, it's looking good. I mean, it's, it's definitely a major step down from, from what I see on my TV screen. And actually, this might be a good opportunity um, maybe to see if we can tweak the, the graphical settings a little bit here. So let me hit the, hit the menu button here and see if we can do a little bit of a graphics boost. So let's hit the high and see if that works. Ah. They were supposed to not have you do this anymore when they switched to the Vulcan thing, so we'll restart later. All right, so this guy is, who is this guy? I forgot his name. He is my, 
um, I think he's like my navigation officer. So we can do expeditions with him. So if we look at the expedition menu, um, we can see potential expeditions. The problem I have right now is that my frigate is damaged, so I can't do any of these things. But I have a combat frigate, and I could send them, if it was not damaged, I can send them off on this mission. And you'll often earn money and resources and other things, and it just kind of goes off and does it on its own. But the, uh, the frigates are expensive. The freighter I got for free because I rescued it from an attack by pirates. So you usually get your first, um, your first freighter for free by uh, rescuing it. This is like the captain. He doesn't do much, though, so we can talk to him. He's, he's sitting down. We'll just maybe kneel down here and get a closer view at him here. And I don't know his language yet, so as I learn more about his language from those, those runes that we run into, we'll see more of this. And, and I can move things you know, from my ship to the freighter, but that's not what we're going to do right now. So that's that. And then let's see what the galaxy map looks like. So we can warp on from here. And now we've got like stellar cartography. <laughs> so, um, and I, can, I have different things that I can point my ship at. I'm not sure if I have any fuel, though, for, for this. So right now, oh, this is cool. So I am here. We want to go there to the next Atlas station. And this is part of the storyline that you can choose to do. Um, the Atlas is kind of like this, this thing that controls the universe. All right, so I'm right here now. And so we can go to here. Let's see. There we go. I don't think I have enough fuel. Let's see. Expand. Right up. OK. Oh, so it gives me the whole lowdown as to what this system's about. And I don't know how I can warp there. There we go. Oh, do I have? So we're going to do the course here, because you can't warp too, too much in one spot. So we're going to go to that star system, and then we go to this one, and then the Atlas station is there. Now it's amazing if I switch this into um, free mode here. Let's go, how do we get out of here? Left, oops, let me go back into this. Because one of the cool things about this game is the vastness of it. So what you can do is go anywhere in the game. Let me get back in front of this thing here. Yeah, they got to work on some of these room scale controls because that's the one thing that's not, not doing it for me yet. So if I hit up, I can go to free explore. And then how do I move around? I can just go, OK, there we go. So I can use my, my controller here. Oh, I get, get like a 3D control. So any one of these stars, we can go to any star we want. All of these stars are mapped in this galaxy. And all of these stars, or most of them, have planets that you can visit. And then when you click on one of these stars, you'll get the lowdown as to what that system's about. OK, so right trigger will warp. So let's just go there. I mean, I, I have fuel, I think. Yeah, there we go. So now we're warping. And we get this cool animation. And then we will end up in this new star system. And here we are. Let me just make sure you all can still see what I'm seeing. Looks like it's working. All right, so here we are. So now I can go into, we can go out to look out the window maybe. So let's go up there and just see what, uh, what it looks like here. And I can look out the window. And it looks like we are right by the space station there. So I'm going to jump over to my ship now. We can go just hop in the ship and go to the space station. Now you saw my, my freighter. So yeah, i got to play around with the graphics settings a bit. I'm, I'm going to try to squeeze a little bit more performance out of here. The challenge with VR is that you really need to keep the frame rate up. So this is a game that, you know, even on my 1080 with this i9 processor, I'll generally do about 60 to 70 frames per second. So to get 90 on this hardware is really pushing it. So this would be a good opportunity maybe to look at a new uh, GPU. I have a GTX 1080, which for about a month or two was probably the thing to get, right? All right, so now we're back in my ship. And we'll just take off. And by the way, all these ships that land where you are, you can buy the ships. Okay, there's a little food running around down there. So why don't we go over to the space stations? I don't think I've shown you that yet. So let's go find that space station, which was not far from my ship. And that's one of the cool things, to be able to look all around you as you're flying. It's just awesome. This is really cool. And then we have a planet here, so we can scan the planet. 
and see what's on it. And this is an irradiated planet, so probably not the most nice place to visit. And then we'll scan this planet over here because this one might have a different biome. Now, the one complaint that people have had about No Man's Sky is that all the planets have the same biome. So if you find a desert planet or whatever, it's always going to be that. All right, so let's go hit the space station. And we'll go and do our pulse engine. The pulse engine is like a faster form of travel. And then we'll just uh, get in there and dock. The controls are starting to make more sense to me. They're not as precise as the Xbox controller is but it seems to work. And we're just gonna dock it in here. I gotta figure out how to yaw this thing. There we go. And now we're docking. And. Now this ship, by the way, I'll, I'll pull up my, um, my menu here. Uh, this ship is a little beat up, and I'll show you when I go to my inventory. So you see all these, these issues. I've got damage. So I found this ship on a planet, a little fighter. So I didn't have to pay for it, and I had to fix it up enough just to get it off the ground. But I still have all these um, cargo slots uh, locked out because I have to get things repaired. And some of them require like platinum and uh, some of these things like the, pug the pugnium I have to get from the, the sentinels when they're, they're hurt. Uh, the chromatic metal here I can make, but it takes a while to, to harvest all the copper to get there. So there's, you know, there's a lot of Minecrafty builder kind of things you have to do in the game. And we'll hop out here and see what they've done with the space station. So let's go walk over here. Now I have a jet pack, which I haven't figured out how to use yet. So maybe we'll try that. That's that. Hmm. I have I gotta brush up on these controls because I usually I like to jetpack up to these. Although I suppose it doesn't matter if I can just. Oops, that that was weird. Let's go walk over here and we'll climb up the stairs. Yeah, so moving around will be very different. Um, maybe a little less efficient than <laughs> than the game controller version. Now the other cool thing is that now all these uh, NPCs walk around. So there's this navigator, Isric here, and if we want to talk to him, we can just uh, have a chat. There he is. Pretty cool. And if I ask for dialect help, he'll teach me one of his words. Yeah, let's do that one here. And we learn the word for help. And this is helpful because as you talk to these people, they'll, they'll be telling you different things. Um, so this is a trading post, so you can trade some of the resources that you've gotten. Now these weird looking guys are fellow travelers and they'll give you, um, They'll give you stuff like navigation aids for some of the planets to look for different things. Um, this is the teleporter, so if I had power on my um, base, I could teleport uh, to and from. So I can put one of these on my base, which I have, and then I can move around. This is a Corvax. It's kind of neat to have these guys walking around. So before, what happened is, is that none of these characters were moving. They were all basically standing like those guys are. So you didn't have all these, these folks walking around and stuff. All right, so that's the space station. There's a lot you can do on the station. So like these guys are doing missions. On the other side, you can buy um, equipment for your ship. And all of this they've added in recent updates. So when the game first came out, it didn't have any of what you're seeing here. It had the space station, but it was just a place to, to sell your stuff. But now as we come up here, up the stairs, we can see some folks. So like this guy, here we'll say, so they have um, ground vehicles, which I haven't installed yet on my base. I have actually a save game with some ground vehicles, so maybe we can try that out. We can talk to them and maybe buy blueprints for one of these things. Um, so we know the word for friend, that's why I can see that. I know the word gek and trade, but I don't know these other words. So as you learn more of the language from each of these creatures, you'll start to be able to communicate with them easier. All right, so let's see what we've got. I just want to buy like an exocraft itself. These are all just components. So I haven't yet in this game um, been able to get one of these things purchased, but you can get uh, land vehicles and all that kind of cool stuff. So let's just jump out of here. So let's go back to my ship. We're going to go pull up the space anomaly now because the big thing with this is multiplayer. 
and hopefully some of you might find me in the multiplayer. And let's just uh, jump back in the ship. I gotta recenter myself here a little bit. And we'll take off. Now you don't need launch fuel when you're launching from a base or, or from a space station or something where there's a landing pad. Um, this system, by the way, has two planets. Some systems have more planets. Some systems have moons. Um, you can get some really awesome vistas on some of these, these alien planets. It's pretty cool. All right, so now we're going we're gonna to go a little bit out into space here, get some distance, and then we're going to pull back on the throttle. And what I'm going to do now, that's a frozen world down there, by the way. I'm going to summon the anomaly. So let's move up here just to get a good spot. And um, we're going to pull up my little thing here. And we're going to go to Quick Menu. And I'm getting a little dizzy right now because the ship is still moving <laughs> as I'm looking at this other thing. And this is the space anomaly. Now, you couldn't summon this before. It used to be something that would just um, appear randomly when you were warping into systems. But now you can summon it at will. And what we're going to do here is fly into it. And inside of this should be the multiplayer interface. So let's take a look at that. But hopefully this is giving you a good, a good feel for what we're doing here in No Man's Sky. And I think I'm using my fastest uh, thing here. So get a little more fuel on that shot. Usually these things give you gold, silver, or fuel. this thing. Oh, gold nugget, that's a new thing. All right, so, and then eventually this thing will capture us and just dock us with the anomaly here. There we go. And this is new for this version. So the anomaly was here before, but this, what you're seeing here, was not. This looks pretty cool. And I'm getting some loading screens here. So I've lost my VR visual. I think we might be crashing. Let's see. I'm not sure what you see on screen here. Oh, yeah, I'm back out to the home screen here. <laughs> so it looks like it may have crashed. Let me see. So it's funny because I'm not seeing in my headset. Wait, wait, wait. There it goes. Okay, so now we're back to the home. So it looks like we had a crash. So let's pull it back up again. Oops. Yeah. And let's go load that up real quick here and see if we can get back in there. Yeah, so the, the, the graphics are definitely running at a much lower resolution than, um, than what I just had in my home screen there. That was unfortunate. Let me just make sure you guys can still see everything. Because I found with No Man's Sky, what it's been doing is pulling up the stereo view also, which is not ideal either. So let me, the headset mirror here. There we go. All right. And you know what I might do, actually, is pull up my other game that I haven't played in a while, because that one I have one of the vehicles. So let's pull that one up. All right. Every time I touch this thing, I adjust the IPD, and I've got to fix that. Okay. Yeah, so if, if, if there's... The only complaints I have with this is that um, it's that warning I'm getting every time I'm stepping too far. Uh, and the, the graphics, even on the PC here, have been dramatically reduced. And I don't think I can put them higher because I think that's going to result in some issues for me. So, so we'll try to summon that space anomaly again and see where we end up. And I think in this game I've got a vehicle we can drive around in too. I haven't loaded up this save in a while. What happened was this save was like my original save game. And... Um, I like just, it's totally screwed up because it was, it had gone through every update and everything just stopped working. So now it's cool. This is a different ship and it looks different. Very cool. I actually kind of like this better than my fighter. I'm like more in, I'm like over the uh, dashboard a little bit more there. Pretty cool. All right. So let's summon that space anomaly again and we'll check out some other bases. So hopefully this will work this time. So let's pull up the screen here. And we'll go over to Quick Menu and we'll pull up our Space Anomaly. There we go. Let's grab that and our... I don't think I can go any faster into it though. Yeah, it's not going to let me go there. So we've got to wait it out. 20 seconds to landing time. 
It's funny, actually, since coming, oh, you know, because we did turn up the graphics before, didn't I? So it actually looks better now. <laughs> but I think, I think it's holding up okay. You know, it's, it's funny, yeah, so you guys probably can't see this, but my hand looks blurry. And what Steam does is it smooths out the frame rate when it's having a hard time keeping up with, um, you know, keeping up with the graphics. So that might be what's happening here. So I might, I might tweak this a little bit more, but you can make the graphics look better. And I think we're crashing again. Nope, there we go. Ah, don't crash. Yep, that is all she wrote on that one, folks.